Hey guys, my name is Heather Lindsay. And my name is Cornelius Lindsay. And I'm so excited that you landed on Life with the Lindsays. This is so exciting. This gives us an opportunity to share our life with yours. Yes, we're going to be talking about everything from entrepreneurship to ministry to your purpose to why you are here. Family, parenting, relationships, marriage, sex, you name it. We are talking about it. So thank you so much for joining us today with Life with the Lindsays. Enjoy it. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, what's up, y'all? How you guys doing? Let me put my phone on uh, on silent, on vibrate. Agreed. Sure I won't be uh, I'll be going off in the middle of our podcast, baby. Hey, baby, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about depression. Oh, uh, so somber. I know it's so somber, but I feel like it's something that we've got to talk about. Yeah, people been hitting happening. me up. They hit me up. They're like, "Yo, would you talk about depression, please? Could y'all talk about depression?" It's a lot of people going through a lot of different things. I think so too. And a lot of them church folk, you know. And I agree. and I feel like it's a conversation that needs to be had, and we need to stop like glossing over the fact that people are depressed and stop just calling it, you know, demonic oppression or whatever it is that people have been calling it. You know, I mean, I, I believe in demonic oppression. I believe in that stuff. I'm not I'm not downplaying it, but I'm just saying I feel like people are not calling these things what they are. And uh, for a lot of people, they are depressed and they don't know why they feel that way. They don't know why they feel how they feel. They just feel a certain way. And it's hard. It's difficult. And I have a personal story with that. But you kick us off, baby cakes. So um, I'll be honest. I, I think I struggled with depression a little bit growing up. Um, I don't recall struggling with it a whole lot, to be honest. Um, I just remember times where I felt like, you know, as I was getting older, I was struggling with my identity, who I was in Christ, and I wanted to kill myself. I remember just thinking thoughts of suicide um, when I was probably maybe a senior in high school or junior in high school when I just hit really hard times. But that was it. And then the next time I think I was kind of faced with a real depression was when I was pregnant with Logan, I had some prepartum, which is why you're pregnant and you're depressed and you don't know why. And then postpartum depression. And, um, you know, it's like you are literally you have this baby and you are having it's supposed to be the best time of your life. Right. And you're so excited because you believe God for this baby. But I just was not happy and I did not know why. Um, I know people have different ways of dealing with depression and how they face it and how they conquer it. Um, for me, one thing that I learned that worked for me was just making sure I was spending time with the Lord every day and spending time in his word and reminding myself what his word says. Um, I know there's other cases where people might need to, you know, go see a psychiatrist and maybe get on medicine if needed. And we pray and there's other avenues and go see a therapist, but when I was going through that, what helped me was talking about it and being open and honest. I remember just sharing with you how I was feeling, sharing with my girlfriends and not being ashamed or embarrassed about saying I'm not happy and I don't know why. Um, and stop trying to, you know, not trying to be perfect. And those different things, me just kind of confronting it and being honest and using the word is what kind of helped me get through it. I think, I think you know, even going back to mention that whole issue of postpartum, I think there are a lot of different uh, women and men yeah. who deal with that. So, I mean, I, I dealt with postpartum. I didn't realize that's what that was going on with me. That was after Taylor. It after was after Taylor. Taylor. You couldn't get out of bed and you yeah. didn't know why. And that's yeah. not like me. Like I'm the kind of person that when, when my eyes open up in the morning, I got to get up. Like <laughs> I can't just lay in the bed. Like I, I don't understand how people just lay around and just watch TV all day. That would literally drive me crazy. I would love to lay in the bed with you all day. Oh my, I could not lay in the bed all day. <laughs> like when I wake up, I got to get up. I got to yeah. get up. I got to brush my teeth. Yeah. I got to do my hair. I got to shave. I'm, I don't even have to go anywhere, but I got to get dressed as if. I mean, yeah. I don't know. In my head, I'm like, hey, I don't know. The president could come by my house today. But I'm just, I got to go. And I think that um, after Taylor, I just, I laid there in the bed. I was drinking, uh, not drinking. I was uh, I was eating like crazy. It was you all were. irregular. It was crazy. And I just. You were, you were gaining weight too. And you're like, what yeah. is wrong with I said, me? I don't know what's going on with me. And then I remember we we started doing some research on postpartum and like how it even affects men. Yeah. So I remember even times like when you were pregnant. Um, where I feel like, you know, we're, we're so close that, you know, I was having some of the same symptoms that you were having. I, I just, I have like back pain. Uh, oh, I was crazy. I remember, nauseous. I, I remember I would get nauseous and there were times where I would just get really tired. Yeah. Like all of a sudden it just hit me and I yeah. would just, I'd be eating irregularly. It was just, it was crazy. And a lot of people, they don't, they don't really know that that happens. I think a lot of times for men, 
no, we don't know it. So we don't call it really what it is. Yeah. Um, I think that my situation is, is a little bit different because I, I never, I never really faced depression in like growing up. I never faced it in college or in high school. I don't really remember facing it in college. It yeah. wasn't until like I was like in like going into ministry in the full time mm, ministry that wow. it hit me. Wow. And then I, I didn't in the beginning I didn't know what it was. I didn't know really what to call it. And I was trying to over spiritualize it. Mm. And I was trying to call it by, you know, this biblical name or this biblical form. I didn't really know what to call it. Is this demonic oppression? Is it mm-hmm. you know, what is it? And and um I didn't know. And I remember talking to people about it. People say, oh, you know, uh, how much time you've been spending in the word? And I'm like, please shut up. Or they'd be like, you know, have you been <laughs> praying? And I'm like, Ugh, ugh you are right. You know, it's like, it's like people would always give me these answers. And I'm not downplaying those things whatsoever, but people would always give me uh certain certain things, certain Christian anecdotes. And I, I just I'm I'm like, well, I'm praying and I still don't feel like anything is happening. Yeah. Like what, what, how, what do you do when you feel like you're praying and you're still not getting any results? Like, what do you do when you're, when you're, you know, you're fasting and you're still not getting results? What do you do when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading my word yet. I walk away feeling worse than when I read it. And it's not saying I don't believe it. It's not saying that my faith, my faith has wavered. And people would say to me, well, maybe, maybe it's a demon. And I'm like, well, you fool, there's no way that the Holy Spirit can, and he he will not inhabit the same place as a demon. Like, you know, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer and I know the but Holy Spirit dwells within me. you by demons. Well, I mean, the Holy Spirit dwells within me. Right. And I mean, like, I mean, I won't, I won't allow for some, for a robber to come and live in my house the same yeah. way the Holy Spirit is not going to allow for a demon to come and live in his, like this is his temple. And when I, when I confess Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit came to dwell within me and that I, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not here to be oppressed by, by, by a demon. So it's like, I, I hear what people are saying, but at the same way, it's like, you're not even practically understanding what you're saying. I mean, he's not trying to drive out a demonic spirit out of me saying that the Holy Spirit dwells within me. And I mean, I've like, it was the Holy Spirit that was constantly compelling me in different ways and revealing different things to me to let me see and let me answer the question. Okay. I feel as if, you know, these things are happening to me. And he was pushing me into ways of diving deeper into him and trusting him more. And, you know, even, even now, I mean, uh, last year was a very rough year for me. I think right around October where it got really, 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 really bad. And I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, I'm reaching out to other pastor friends I have. And I'm like, man, I'm going through this. And, you know, one thing that I, one thing that really, really sucked, it was like, you know, when you feel like you're going through something and you reach out to people and you're like, man, I'm really going through. And it's like, it's almost like they don't, it's almost like they feel, I had one guy who was like, he like, are you, he asked me, so are you really depressed? Are you just looking for attention? And I'm like, wow. That's you know? Like, yeah. like, where's the empathy? Yeah. And where's the empathy for like, man, I, well, maybe, maybe I don't know exactly how you feel, but let me at least seek to understand. It was more like, well, dang, are you looking for attention? It's like, Nick, I don't need your attention. I don't need your attention. Like that, ain't, that I was reaching out to you because I thought you were a friend and I wanted to find somebody who I could really confide in to say, I'm having these thoughts Yeah. and to call it out, it was thoughts of suicide. I remember there was, there was one time I got out of the bed and I sat on the side of the bed. And I looked over at you and Roman was laying in the middle and I thought, you know, Taylor was right across the hall, Logan's down the hall. And I thought, you know, it would be better for me if I just wasn't here. And it was just, it was like you were tormented by those thoughts. In that way, I don't feel like it's demonic oppression. In that way, I feel like it was, it was that voice. It just, you know, it just kept saying, you know, you need to do this. But in the same way, I feel like I still had the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he's like, you don't have to, you don't have to give into that. You don't have to give into that. And it's, I believe it was through and by the Holy Spirit that I was able to escape those, those times and escape those moments. But um, yeah, mine didn't come until after, until after I'd like, God, I'll do this. God, I'll serve you. And God, I'll help you. And then it's like, after I did all that, I got angry at God. So I'm like, dang, God, like I'm giving you a hundred percent of me and everything I got. And I feel like I'm suffering at this point. Like I'm going through. So that was, that was very hard. And I think on the, on the flip side, if you are married to somebody that's suffering with severe depression, it's so difficult too, because I feel like you're watching your spouse just be so sad. Right. And your mindset is totally different. Like my mindset, my outlook on things is totally different than yours. We always joke and say that we're night and day 
But watching you go through that was so hard because you can't just tell that person to snap out of it. You can't tell that person, believe the best, walk by faith. This is what you need to do. Yeah. Take these five steps. And then you begin to almost take it personal. You know what oh, I yeah, mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. And then what happens is I realized that through that, I have an opportunity to develop because I'm going through this test too with you. Because when you're married, you're one flesh. Yeah. So when one, one person is depressed, y'all, you're going to feel that. And yeah. so I realized like I have a choice. I can be bitter and mad and make it worse and complain, or I can believe the best. I can pray and I can cover my husband on a regular basis. I got my oil. I'm going to anoint everything every single day. I'm going <laughs> to do what I know to do. But I realized like I couldn't take it personal Yeah. because I'm like, I know you love me. But right now you're just sick right now with depression. It's almost like if a person is sick with cancer or sick with a cold. Yeah. And so I realized like, you know what? My husband's going through the season. It's this thorn in our side, but we're going to get through it. And I have to believe the best. And I had to make sure that I did not allow what you were going through to be transferred to me. Mm. I've done a study and it said that 50% of people who have a spouse who's depressed, they end up getting depressed too. So I realized I had to like put my guards up and make sure that I didn't allow for myself to get depressed and allow for myself to get down. But instead I'm like, okay, let me make sure the house is clean. Let me make sure the environment's healthy and it's happy. And I'm not bringing, you know, I'm not nagging my husband every five seconds. And yeah. like, how can I bring joy and light to our life and situation? And that, and that, that helps. That helps a lot. Yeah. It helps a lot because, you know, you're already walking in darkness Yeah. and it feels like that. It's almost like yeah. you're walking in a dark room and you don't know, you don't know where the next step is. Yeah. And you feel like you're by yourself. You feel like you're alone. And that is how it feels. And, I, and, and, you know, being able to walk into a house that has light in it and, you know, being able to be around you guys who were, who were, who was bubbly and <laughs> excited and everything else that would help me to just like, okay, you got to snap out of this. Yeah. And there were times like I, one thing that I would, I would have to keep reminding myself is, okay, Quinish, you have responsibilities. Yeah. Like, you know, it, when you're, when, when the kids get home, like you, you you still have to be dad and sorry, but you just can't go lay in the bed all day because that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to just yeah. kind of go lay in the bed and just kind of lay my life away. And I'm like, well, no, because now my kids need my time. And I can only imagine for the people who are listening to this, who don't even have that fight in them because it's, yeah. it, I mean, I'll be honest, it was hard. Yeah. It was hard to just like, you know, just to sit there and, you know, my, my oldest son is like, Hey, let's go, let's do a, let's do a nerf battle. And I'm just like, man, if only you knew how I felt right now, uh, you would probably not ask me to do that. But I'm like, OK, Cornelius, you need to get up. You need to do a nerf battle with him because these are precious moments that my son is going to remember forever. Yeah, they're forever embedded in him. But it's it's hard. It's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. And when you when you have people, when you have a spouse that can say, OK, I'm going to get up and I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to I'm just trying to make I'm going to just try to make do what I can and just try to make it better. I feel like that's that that helps a lot more. Uh, and then for that spouse out there who's like, man, I'm the one who's going through this. Is knowing that, hey, at some point, I still got to take care of my responsibilities. I mm -hmm. still got to do what I'm supposed to do. I still need to get up. Now, even, even during that time, you know, there were things that I was still doing. Uh, I was like the gym has always been a great place to help me. I believe the that gym helps also helps time. physically. Uh, because it helps to, it helps to, you know, even levels out. And, and it and helps, helps me because I like to look at you in your oh, six pack. Oh, praise <laughs> the Lord. Come on. But it's like, you know, it, help, it helps when you go to the gym. Um, I started laughing a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I need to laugh. Yeah. My, yeah. my whole life has just been serious. I've been serious, yeah. serious, serious. And like, I like to laugh. I have a very dry sense of humor. It's just mm -hmm. how I do it. And I, 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 and I just started laughing. There are times I just started taking breaks. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm going to sit around. I like to watch The Office. And I just watch The Office over and over and <laughs> over. I mean, I love it. I love The Office. I think it's the best show that was ever created. It's so like I would watch it over and over and over again. But um, I needed that time. I needed that time to laugh. I needed that time to just get away. And I get away with my friends and we just go hang out and just go sit around and just talk, just shoot the breeze. Wouldn't talk about ministry, wouldn't talk about, you know, church. It was just us just having fun and laughing. And that helped me. And having those core group of guys that I can just reach out to and talk to helped a lot. I think you got those people out there who are listening who are like, man, I don't have anybody to reach out to. And I really empathize with you with that. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, at some point, you know, you have to realize that you can't do life alone. And I know how it feels to not want to reach out uh, because 
there were times where I was like, man, I don't want to tell anybody. I don't want to hang out with anybody. But I, and I, I told two of my two of my friends that one time you know, we were supposed to meet up to go to lunch one day, and I was like, "Hey guys, you know I'm, I'm gonna cancel. Uh, I, I don't. I think I'm gonna go." And they were like, "Nope, you're going." And I'm like, "Dude, I'm not going." It was like, "Shut up, you're going." It was like, "I'll come pick you up. Oh, we're gonna come by your house." I'm like, "Don't come by my house." And they're like, "Well, meet us at you know we're meeting at." And I was like, "Whatever." So reluctantly, I left the gym. I got I, I got dressed at the gym, left, went and met them. And I think I think we probably sat there for like four hours. And we laughed pretty much the whole time. Yeah. And I left there like. <sighs> Laughter is good medicine. Oh, it's it? great. Medicine. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. It's great medicine. So that that really, really, really helped. All right, I want to take a break. But when we come back, I want to talk about codependency. OK, and we're back. And I want to talk about codependency because, again, I feel like there's two sides, right? It's it's the person that's walking through the depression and then it's the other person that is trying to encourage that person, pray for them. And it could be your spouse. It could be your sister, your brother, your mother. You don't know what they're facing, right? What they're going through. Um, but I realized there was a point of time where I became codependent on you. Meaning like, if you're okay, I'm okay. If you're not okay, I'm not okay. And I became very controlling in that sense. And I, came, I became controlling because I was codependent on how you felt that day. What do you mean by controlling? Just so we, just so, you know, people out there, they know what you're talking about. Um, I would say I was probably being controlling with, I'm trying to give an example. Um, say you would, you know, be like, Hey, I'm want to go on this guy's trip. And I'm like, no, not unless I can go with you. <laughs> you know oh I mean? yeah. I remember you did you used to do that. You used to you piss I mean? me off. Yep. Right. I that was probably that. the earlier part of our marriage. Yeah, I remember that. I'd be like, girl, you can go on my guy's trip. No, I know. I don't want you. <laughs> now I'll plan the whole thing. If you need, me. <laughs> we have fun too. We have so much Cause fun. You need to go. Cause if y'all, if y'all came, if, if you women came, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fun anymore. No, it wouldn't be well, fun. Cause oh, it, just, wait, it, wait, <laughs> it wouldn't be fun if I was on a trip with you, baby. No, because then I have to be responsible. That's true. Because like when I'm with you in the airport, you don't babe, you don't pay attention. You will run right into the person who's walking walking in front of you. Because I'm totally submitted to you, baby. But that and that's and no, that's cool. I don't mind that. I'm just saying that when I'm with you and my kids, like I'm I'm on. I'm responsible. Yeah. And this is not my like when I go on vacation, family vacation, <laughs> I already know I'm not going to relax. <laughs> Period. Same. I'm on guard the whole time. Yeah. When we're on when we're on our couple trip, just me and you, that's not a vacation for me. Really? No. Are you kidding me? It's not a vacation for me because I'm concerned. I'm always concerned about your well-being. I'm concerned like, man, I mean, I want you to be with me. Like when I'm like, hey, where are you going? Hey, I want to walk. I want to go to go like, go to this store. I'm going with you. Yeah, that's uh, true. You never really let me just like. I don't like, want you to go anywhere by yourself yeah. because I mean, they snatching up people nowadays. That is true. And I'm not going to sit in my room like, I, like when we're when we're going somewhere. It's like I'm driving. That's I think true. in our marriage, you've only driven what? Three times twice. with me, twice, and then you stopped both times. It's fine. I'm like, girl, like I think I was on, I was on medicine one time. I was like, yo, I will, the, I will drive. Taken out. I know they put me on this <laughs> on these medicines, and yeah. I was like, dude, I'll drive. Yeah. But I think that even then, it's a protection thing for me. Yeah. So I can't even let my guard down. When I go on my guys trip, I can let my guard all the way down because I'm like, these buses, they can take care of themselves. Right. And There's I will no straight leave them. Oh, none. I will straight leave them at a restaurant. Yeah. They're grown. That's true. But yeah, that's true. Codependency. Um, <laughs> so I think, but I think that's good. If we could just hang out there real quick, it's important that you let your spouse or, you know, the person that you're dating or whatever the case is have their own hobbies and their friends in a life outside of you. Absolutely. That's healthy. It's healthy. Cause if you think about the triggers or things that can bring on depression, some things could be ministry. It could be having multiple kids. It's like your schedule that you used to have, you no longer have because now it's like you used to be able to go to the gym at eight o'clock, but now I'm like, Oh no, sir, you better go to the gym before, <laughs> before four thirty. Yeah. You know what I mean? So things change. So you have to give your spouse an opportunity to have girls trips and guys trips and, you know, just have that freedom for them to be able to do that. Like last week, you encouraged me to go on a mommy day yeah. and I went, it was so great. I went to a hotel locally in Atlanta and I just spent time by myself. I couldn't sleep because I was wondering what was going on. I told on. you you should have stayed longer. You're not going to be able to do it the first night. The second, I third know, night would be good. But I travel hacked it, babe. So I ran out of points on that card. So I understand. sometimes I, understand. I can be cheap with my travel hacking, but I'm like, Oh, only got one night. I'm only using one night. But I mean, but I, it's, your mental health is worth it. I agree. Your mental health is worth and having that time alone is important. Yeah. Like we got the kids. The kids will be okay. Yeah. Like I got them. It's just hard, baby, because I feel like 
I want to, and this is part of the control thing, uh-huh. right? And I, this is not just with you, but just like, sometimes I'll see Roman pick up something. It's like, how did that get on the floor? And he'll put it in his mouth. Who cares? But he'll I am there it. to get it out of his mouth. You know how much stuff I probably ate as a Maybe, kid? Maybe, but it's things that he could choke on. So it's like things he like- He could choke on air. He could choke on spit. Oh my God. Things happen. Oh my God. But the good, but the good thing is, <laughs> is that you can't, you can't worry your life yeah. with like, okay, at this point, if you're not healthy- yeah. Nobody's gonna be healthy. Yeah, because that whole that whole little junk about happy life, happy wife is just a bunch of biggest bunch of crap I've heard for in my life. But doesn't it go for both ways though? If it goes both if ways. If you're not happy, when you have a spouse that's not happy. The whole house feels the tension in the room. Absolutely, and it's hard. Everything even goes with the kids. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can feel that immediately, yeah. and so I think you know, for us, just recognizing, um, you know, when you're going through something, and I want you to think about marriage in sickness and in health, right? Yeah. For better or for worse, those things are going to get tested. And I feel like we end up talking about marriage a lot on our podcast, but whatever. But I just feel like those things are going to get tested, you know? And I do want to read a scripture really quick that um, I remember I forgot about a season where I did go through a depression. That is when, remember when my stepdad passed away, then Chris committed suicide. And then my friend Kathy died of a brain aneurysm. And then we had a miscarriage all within about a month. Remember that? I remember that. I remember just opening it was like 2011, 2011 and 2011. we were newlyweds. Right. I remember that. And it was so frustrating because I was like the woman with the issue of blood. I could not stop bleeding after that miscarriage. And it was just such a hard season. I went into a depression and I remember that that's probably one of the first known times where I really went to a depression. And now I realize it was probably a lot to do with the miscarriage and all of the testosterone or estrogen or whatever what was happening. It was like a postpartum, right? Yeah. And so I remember just, I would read my Bible and I would open it, but it would, I would be numb. Like the words weren't coming off into my heart. Yeah. I was just reading it because I felt like I need to, I know I need to do this. Yep. Um, so, um, I remember the Lord taking me to John five and, um, I'm going to read it really quick. So, Okay. This is Jesus. He's saying, um, sometime later, Jesus, this is John five and five. Sometimes later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem to one of the Jewish festivals. And now there was a, um, now there is in Jerusalem near a sheep gate, a pool, um, which is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five colored columns. There's a great number of disabled people that would lie there, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. And one who had been there invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that about his condition um, and the fact that he's been struggling so long, Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? And this was the guy's response. Sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. When I'm trying to get in, somebody else goes down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the man was cured and he picked up his mat and he walked. And I remember the Holy Spirit telling me, Heather, get up. It's like, I felt like I had so many excuses to lay there. I had so many excuses to not be productive. I had so many excuses because I felt like I had a valid reason. I was grieving, going through a miscarriage. We're in our first year of marriage. And I'm wondering if our marriage will even make it. Um, I felt like it was hard because we had left our old church and we lost so many friends. And I just felt like I had so many excuses and so many reasons, just like this guy, for laying there for all those years. So for him, it was 38 years where he laid there. But I wonder how many of us lay in our life and in our situations when Jesus is saying, get up, right? Yeah. Get up. And and I love for you, like you continue to go to the gym. You continue to press forward. You're like, this is not going to be my life. This is not going to be a sum total of who I am. So I remember that day getting up and um, really just deciding that moment, God, I'm going to trust you and I'm not going to make any more excuses. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I speak to that. I, I also speak to those people who say, I, I don't know how to get up. Yeah. Sometimes that is really hard. It's, and it, sometimes it's really hard to hear. It's like, just get up. Um, I mean, there were there was there were times when it was like, I, I, I know it's almost like it's almost like you feel paralyzed. It's like you're in this state of paralysis where you know what to do. It's just it's very hard to do it you know, just to get up. It's like, just get up. But it's almost as if your body is like, I, I can't move. Yeah. And I feel like uh, the the weight of the world is on my shoulders. And, you know, um, 
that's hard. And I, I say to you who, who's listening to this and you're like, man, I, that's me. I, I don't, I don't know how to get up. I don't know how to just get up out of the bed. I don't know how to just move. I don't know how to just do it. Uh, I say to you that, um, at some point you, you have to look at yourself in the mirror you got to tell yourself like, and I've been there so many times, you know, just take another step. Like instead of trying to, it's almost like if you can get it, if you can visualize it, visualize this in your head, you know, you're almost trying to get to the ending point. Cause you're, you may be thinking like, how do I get up to go to work? You're like, cause this is how I feel. Instead of thinking about when you get home from work, think about just getting up and going to brush your teeth. Sometimes it was like just going piece by piece helped me to get there. That yeah. is what helped me go to the gym. But that's like, getting up. That's good. Baby. Yeah, but it's like, but it's like, okay, but it was it, it it's deeper than just than just just getting up because just getting up is the implication like, okay, well, I don't need to just sit here. I'm just get up. But it's almost like just piece by piece. I'm gonna take the covers off. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna put my feet on the floor. All right. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to I'm gonna get to the restroom. I'm going to brush my teeth. I want to do this. And I was just going piece by piece. And then sometimes you know, I get, I, I would get to the point where I'm getting my workout back together and I just kind of sit down. I'm like, okay. And I just, I just get up, you know, but it's like, it's, it's doing it piecemeal instead of thinking that you got to do it all together or thinking that you have to be, that you have to just be strong all the time. Um, it's like God can deal, God, God can take care of our weakness. He can strengthen our weakness. God can forgive our sin. Um, it's just the only thing that God that God will not do is God won't tolerate our pride. And it's in our pride that we feel as though we have strength to do it ourselves. Like I tell people all the time, they talk about willpower. Man, will ain't got no power. It's like at some point when you get when you get weak enough, you begin to learn where the strength of God really comes from. And that's when you have to really depend on him. God, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. I feel like I am falling into a deep whole and I don't know how to get out of this. And then I'm, I'm working to get out of this thing. And, and so you really just begin to depend on him. And you may be saying, well, how do I know that he's there? You got to believe it by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, faith is the substance of things held forth, the, the evidence of things not yet seen. Um, and, and when, when you know that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, I believe it says, it says, and, and it is by faith that we please God. So it's like, having the faith. Okay, God, you're here. I may not feel you. I may not, I it may not feel like it, but God, I'm going to get up because I know that you're here with me. And uh, I believe that that helps. That helps a lot. So next I want to talk about like other practical ways of going through the journey of depression and healing from it. Okay. So I think it's interesting that we have these two different perspectives because my perspective on depression and how I got through it was like, how I am in life, right? How I am in life naturally. And I'm not saying naturally, but how I am just, I always look on the bright side of everything. Yeah. Like it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be great. The glass is overflowing. Life is good. God is faithful. I trust him no matter what. And I feel like when I even went through hard times, I took on that mindset immediately, right? And then I feel like when you go through your depression, it's totally different than the one that I went through. So I don't want you guys to ever measure depression and say, well, yours is not as intense as mine because of your perspective in life, right? No matter what you walk through, no matter what you're facing, um, especially with depression, it's hard and it's difficult. Now I want to talk about like going to a psychiatrist and getting medicine prescribed because some people are chemically in their brain and balanced in that way. And they need medicine to help them to look on the bright side as they meditate on the scriptures, as they put one foot in front of the other. What do you think about that? I mean, it, it's hard to hear that. Uh, right. It's hard to hear somebody say, you need to go to a psychiatrist. It's like, you know, you need to go to a psychiatrist. Like, who are you telling me? you? Need? It's like, that. that's that's hard to hear. That's hard to hear because it's, especially for people who who feel as though they are, I mean, they have pride and they're, they're self-sufficient. It's like, I don't, I don't, I'm not taking medicine. I'm not doing that. And, and, um, I think there there are other practices out there that I, I, hey for some people who who need to go and who need to get who to get on medicine it's just my my thing with that is I feel like once you get once you get on that stuff it it's like it begins to regulate your body it's almost like you just continuously need it then you get to a point where you need to ward yourself off of it you need to find a more holistic way of really being able to deal with it um, you know a lot of talks about about yoga and uh, a lot of the 
you know, a lot of the eldership, they'll, they'll be like, don't do that because you're going to get the demons in you and because of how it is and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I've heard of many Christian uh, forms of yoga. In fact, I've even uh, I've even seen it where I mean, it's like it's the way in which you're stretching your body. It's really what it is. It's this deep form of breathing and meditation and stretching of the body. And people always say, well, it comes from these different these different places of religion and blah, blah, blah. But if, if you really understand the concept of history, everything that derives out of anything comes from the word of God. I mean, it was in what the book of Joshua, I think it was Joshua one and eight. It said, and he meditated in the word both day, day and night. night. Yeah. Like that's meditation. That is, that is literally that's sitting Bible. down with that's <laughs> Bible. Like it's in the Bible. It says he meditated in the word day and night. He actually got the word in him. So it's like, you can stretch, you can breathe while still taking in the word of God. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be this whole, you know, namaste. I tell people all the time, namaste with Jesus. Like that's right. how it is. Namaste, right. namaste <laughs> with Jesus, and that's it. And, but it, it like that you don't you don't have to get into the other occultic practices of what you think is Ever, out there. Yeah. But it's it's in it's in these deep breathing techniques. It's allowing for it's allowing for the stress that's on you to roll off of you. Like there are times when I'm like I'm going to the gym. I'm not going to do any heavy lifting today. Like I need to just stretch. I need to breathe. Wow, I need to yoga. You stretch, baby. Don't do that. Mm-mm, don't I didn't do know that. You start stretching. Don't do that. Because then you know that right knee be struggling. Now that, you you be here when I stand up. No, you be like. The kids be looking like somebody shooting. Man, right. it be it, and it's in My the baby. back. But even like we have a chiropractor. And, you know, just getting chiropractic work done. I love him. I, we, I love him too. Like you get, getting that work done. Massages. Like we get massages done. It's part of our mental health. It's part of our mental health. And those things are holistic. And, and in these, the budget. And we're going to play that. And, and, and these are these are believers yeah. who are doing these things. And there's so many different wrong ways of looking at these things that can yeah. really help us. Yeah. It's like, yeah, go, go, go and get help. Hey, I, I, went, I went to go see a therapist. Uh, for me, it was a, it was a guy, he was a, he was a retired pastor. Um, you know, he was good. He was good, but, you know, whatever. And I, I feel like, you know, now it's like, okay, you can go there, you get what you need. But then afterwards, I'm just going to say this. I feel like, you know, a lot of times with the depression, there is a, there is a rooted issue. Yeah. And sometimes the depression is a way of showing us that there's this pressure that is inside of us that's trying to be released, but we don't want to let it go. That's a great way to look at it. That's a great. We just don't want to let it go. And he's like, you know, God is like, okay, this is an indication that there's pressure in you and you don't want to release it. And I need for you to release it. That's good. There have been conversations you and I have had that was like, I felt the pressure go. <sighs> Immediately. Immediately. I love and I'm those like, combos. Oh, great. I mean, th- but they were hard. Oh, they were very so hard. Tough conversations. Very we tough. talked from what, like 8 30 at night until 2 a.m. In the morning. In the morning. And it was like we talked about this area and it was just very hard because I thought I was a perfect wife and I guess I wasn't. It's fine. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, but you, you learn about important yourself. Conversations because marriage exposes and reveals. So do hard times. Yeah. But it's pressure. It's pressure. And a lot of people who I talk to who feel depressed, there's typically a there's typically a root of pressure. Yeah. And that pressure is saying, I want to get out, but you won't let me out. Yeah. There is a depth of truth that is locked within you and you just won't let me go. Let me go. Yeah. And you're like, but if I let you go, it's going to it's going to ruin everything. And it's like, but it's time. Yeah. Because if not, you are literally being sucked in. You're being sucked inward. Yeah. So now you're in the assembly of believers and you still feel alone. I wrote a book. Uh, it's a book out there. You can get it on Amazon. It's called Suffering in Silence. Yeah. And in this book, I talk about my bouts with depression and what that looked like. But it's like you're in the assembly of believers and you just feel alone. You feel by yourself. I think that's a great, a great perspective and a great way to look at it. Um, I think another area that can affect us when it comes to um, actually, before I talk about food, because I was about to go into food, I want to talk about therapists on, on my perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I agree. I believe that because I have a therapist, too, um, for throughout my life. And I've been called to preach and encourage people and build them up. And sometimes I need that place where I can go and get a facial for my soul. <laughs> and so I go to a therapist. Um, she's amazing. She's an older woman. She's in her 70s. Um, 60s or 70s, just a godly woman. She's amazing. She prays with me, prays for me as I'm preaching. She's awesome. But she helps me to get to a lot of root 
issues. Um, but the next part I want to talk about is food. I believe that food plays a huge role in the way that our bodies physically feel. If you're pumping your body with sugar Hold on. all day, Hold on. I'm talking sugar from, from sweets, Hold on. from processed food, Hold on. from alcohol. Hold on. And I read the study that was saying that you're more likely to be depressed the more drink the more you drink. Oh Lord. Exactly. Jesus, more than eating unhealthy foods. But we're we gonna talk about that later. Um so um <laughs> but the food that you eat how it is physically affecting your body. Yeah. You have to think about that. Think about the time when you ate that fried chicken pork chop and all them sweet potato yams that had a pound of sugar in them. Itis. You had the itis. You are sleepy. You're tired. SF, the and the itis. thing is this, if you're eating like this and you're not giving your body a break from unhealthy foods and processed foods, the thing is the purpose of food is to fuel your body so you can do what God has called you to do. Mm. But I believe that there's a lot of people that are not, they don't feel good about themselves, right? From, because of what they're eating on a regular basis. Yeah, they have their they have poor self-image. They do. But then you're mad because all the Krispy Kreme donuts you keep eating, keep going to your stomach. Yeah. And you want to feel better and you want to feel good, but you keep putting trash in your body. And yeah, you feel, you don't, you don't feel confident enough to go to a gym because you feel, you feel inadequate once you get there. Like, I don't know how to work the machines. I don't like the way I look. I don't feel good. Everybody yeah. here looks like a professional. I don't. So, yeah. No, that's a real thing. So, I, and even with our weight, it's 80% what you eat and it's 20% your workout. Mm. That's real though. So, mm -hmm. it's the crazy thing is, remember after, I think it was like after Taylor, um, I was showing, I was like, baby, I have a four pack. And you were like, how do you have a four pack? And you don't work out as much as I, as I do. You remember that? And it's just like, I remember so, that. It was but, a I'm plant based. You know what I mean? So it's what you eat. Oh, really, here we go. I knew you'll you throw that plant based really in there. It matters. Hold oh, on. Let's just talk about it. Let's talk about it. in there. Oh, Babe. here we go. Now, now, what I am saying oh, is this. Oh, gosh. What I am saying shoot is. Shoot from this, the hill. Baby. Well, shoot from the we hill. Keep, we keep it 100 on this podcast. I, I, didn't, I didn't say we couldn't. I just said shoot from the hill. That okay. means that mean, that mean you state your case because you state your case because I already got it. mine. I believe that eating plant based uh -huh. is key in our emotional and physical health. Ciao. Now, and vegans not only, be dying too. Hold on. No, no. I agree that vegans, everybody going to die, babe. Hey, in a hundred years, none of us are going to be here. But what I'm saying is this, babe, <laughs> a lot of people's lives are being cut short because they're eating processed food. They're eating lots of bacon and pork chops and, oh, I and red meat. every day. And I eat red Sweetheart, meat. Sweetheart, I know. And guess what? Heart disease runs in your family. And it runs in your family, babe, because everybody eats Pork chops. I don't bacon. eat pork chops. I eat bacon. You eat bacon. I know, baby. Baby, this is not directed towards you. This is general. Now, if you get if you get convicted, then oh, I ain't convicted. Okay. I'm just I'm just taking up. I'm just taking okay. up. I'm taking up for the for everybody else, for the other <laughs> half of the people. Because every time I listen to I mean, when couples listen to our our podcast, people listen to our podcast. Somebody can somebody can identify with me, and somebody can can identify with you. Sure. Somebody out there is like, yes, Heather. Tell them Heather. You need to let them know Heather. And I'm out there with the other part, like. No. <laughs> Big sign. No. <laughs> okay. As a Titus II woman who is a keeper of our home, it is my responsibility to make sure that my family eats healthy. And I'm the and, and as a man who's a keeper of his own body, it is my responsibility to do what I want to do with my body. But, but what what did I ask if you want to eat this morning for for? Yeah, actually, dinner? I mean it was chicken and rice. I mean a chicken and, and veggies and some gravy and stuff like that, which is great. No, that, no, that, that kind that kind of stuff is excellent. And I, and I get I get exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. I think everybody else. Uh, in the world understands exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I do believe that everything, everything, you know, and, and I, I want to use this loosely, but everything in moderation, you know, that's obviously not saying, you know, you do a little poison in moderation because poison is still poisonous. Um, but I, I, I just I can't help to shake the feeling. I do feel like there's a lot of propaganda out there now that is used to tell people that you have to eat a certain way because if you don't eat a certain way. Then that's why people are dying now. And people don't even know why people are getting autism now. They don't they, they, they don't know why people are doing what I don't trust nobody what they do what they be talking about. So it's like I hear I hear I hear that part. But I do I do agree with the part of you saying 
Like with the sweets, I do believe that sugar is intoxicating to the brain. It's like cracked. To your it's, brain. it's cracked. That's why it's very difficult it's to get off of it. It's very addicting. Uh, sodas, all that kind of Cheese stuff. I mean, che- I mean, so we don't, we thank yeah. God, you know, we cut out sodas and stuff in our house a long time ago. You know, if we do like to get stuff, I mean, you know, we invested in a juicer because those things are amazing. Yeah. Because you can juice your own fruits and, and they taste yeah. good. And Vitamix, you got a Vitamix. And, you know, we have all this stuff. We have a bread maker in our house now so that we don't have to, you know, we don't have to rely on store-bought bread. But I think for those individuals who are listening to this, who are like, well, that's great that y'all have that, but I can't afford all those things. Those things can be expensive. It's like, so what do I do? And it's just knowing that, okay, I need to, I, I've had to develop the habit of looking on the back more often yeah, and being able great, to say yeah. what's in this. Yeah, that's great. What kind of preservatives? Can I pronounce this? what's in this? Yes. Cause I would be like ruboflavin. I don't even know what ruboflavin <laughs> means. <laughs> like you Google, you'd be like ruboflavin and you'd be like, like mm-hmm. cancer causing, cancer causing. <laughs> like, they'd be like the, from the, from the stern of cows and you're like, nah, bro, I'm straight. So it's yeah. like, you know, I, I didn't realize gelatin. Yeah. Was like, I didn't, I didn't realize that, you know? So when certain things you look on the back and then you start to educate yourself on what you're putting in your body. Like I do like red meat. I like bison. Yeah. I eat bison. I like bison. I like buffalo. I know. It makes me sad. You make you sad for what? Because it's an animal? Baby. No, it makes me sad because I feel like your your body is not, you shouldn't be eating red meat based my on body, your blood type. Look, my, my body had a bison burger yesterday. My body was like, you know what my body said? Thank you. Gosh. You said thank you. But bro. hold on. Did you not feel better and lighter when you did not eat meat? Yes or no? Yes I can't no. even remember. No, back no, then. yes or no. I can't even remember. Did back you not then. have more energy? Was your mind not clear? What do you mean clearer? My mind's clear now. I just remember you telling people because my baby was plant based for two years, and I made my baby all my baby's food. And I remember you saying, I, "My mind's clear. My eyes are clear. I feel healthier. I have more energy. I sleep better at night." So listen, I'm not here trying to tell everybody they need to go plant based, but give your body a rest from meat. Think about it. A rest from meat. Seriously, even if it's just 30 days, go on a detox and give your body a chance to Animals eat plants, okay? I feel like what I am doing is, is I'm taking care of the middleman so that ultimately I can leave more plants and veggies for you all. You're getting so you can mm -hmm. eat the eucalyptus and you can eat, (laughs) you can eat, you can eat, you know, fresh mold lawn, you can eat all that stuff, (laughs) and you don't have to worry about the animals. Because people like me were taking them out. So you're eating third party food. Uh, that's what that's what it is. You, you're getting your protein from the the vegetables false, that animals eat. False. That's not that's true, baby. False. It's true. False. That, that that cow that cow has good protein. Hold on. So for everybody tuned in right now, um, <laughs> I just want to call my husband out. Um, we're supposed to be getting this tower in our home. Uh-huh. And it's oh, gonna be producing you gonna do that fruits right and vegetables. Now? Oh, you gonna do that? Are you going vegan after you get that yes or no? Look, okay. So I'm about we, to text we Ethan met, right we now. We met we met this amazing couple. Well, we see them all the time. We're in Maui. Oh, well, last year we met them, and then this year we went to Maui. They were in Maui at the same time. Shout out to you, Ethan. Boom, you're the man. Um, and he's in what is he in? Canada? Canada. Canada. <laughs> I know, I just said it wrong. But Canada. Um and he created this this tower that produces like you can grow your own fruits and veggies inside. So it's like it's like a hydro type of thing. And it's really cool. You know, you don't worry about bugs and stuff like that. And he was just talking about it. And I was like, you know what? And you know what? It could have been it could have been the Hawaiian sun that had that had. Are you a man messed of your up my word? brain? I just want to know if you're a man. I, of your I, word. I haven't finished yet. Oh, OK. Go ahead, baby. I just text him. I had so, yeah. I just it 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 it. It just messed up my brain. Yeah. And in a moment's notice, you know, you say things and you immediately regret it. So I said my exact words were when we get the tower, the day we get the tower, I'm going to go vegan. That's what I said. And I meant I meant exactly what I said. The day we get the tower, I'm going vegan. So for everybody that just tuned in, you can erase everything he said before (laughs) this because he's about to go vegan. The day of that that day, I will go vegan because we're going to be getting fresh fruits and everything. That day, made from I the will tower. go vegan. Okay. That day. Well, I just text him, and so that that day. No, no, you're saying that day moving forward. No, no, no. I'm, no, I'm no. saying I'm saying you can't I'm be saying, vegan for no day, babe. Why? You just say give your body a rest. Thirty days. You don't do you do you rest for thirty days, baby? Thirty you don't, days. You don't lay down in the bed for thirty days. If you do, then you in a hospital bed and something wrong with you. You may be in a casket. I you only rest. For, you rest for like eight hours. I literally will make you whatever and you plus, want. Plus, I rest anyway. I do intermittent fasting. I give my body a break from meat. 
baby. What? You eat at midnight. A whole meal, <laughs> like with like bacon and b- how are you intermittent fasting? What you talking about? How? How? You, how? Who? You, I don't know how. You eat and then you put the who plate on the side. I, I ain't never heard of how. And then you go to str- you go to sleep. <laughs> what is wrong with that? Because I wake up and there's bowls all over the room and I. What's said, wrong with that? What did he do when I was sleeping? Eat the whole kitchen? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was hungry. I got up. I guess, I guess emotions make you cry sometimes. Wait, what is that from? What is that from? That's from something. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> they make you fall in love. Because you don't, you don't say stuff like that. So that. Emotions make you cry sometimes? What is that from? Emotions make you cry sometimes. Is that from the office or is Emotions it a rap Emotions make you cry lyric? sometimes. They I'm about make to you Google fall it. In love. No, no. What is that, baby? Tell me so I don't have to look it up. It's uh, H-Town. Who's H-Town? You don't know who H-Town is? Makes you cry sometimes. Are you really Googling emotions make you cry sometimes? Yes. Oh, it is a song. Hold on. It's called... It's- H-Town, 1995. Child, you was born in 86. What you know about this? You was nine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cut that all that short. <laughs> yes, I was. I was born in 86. My baby. My baby was not. Okay, so I've never heard of H-Town. You've never heard of H-Town? I haven't. You've never heard the song Emotions? No, I've never heard of it in my life. Are you... You never, you ain't heard the, you, you never heard the album? Baby, I have no clue what you're talking about. Legit no clue. Oh my goodness gracious. I I got I have so much work to do. You do. I have so much <laughs> I can't even believe right now that you've never heard of H Town. I haven't. What have I been doing with you for the past 12 years? Thank you. I have been intro- I but I've tried to introduce you to I've introduced you to Al Green. I introduced you to <laughs> Marvin Cease. I introduced you to a plethora of of African American artists. <laughs> And I cannot believe that you have never heard H Town. Are you trying to call out my white side right now? I I mean, it's dominant. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying I'm saying European side is showing. That's all I'm saying. You introduced me to what Friday? All those movies. I couldn't believe that you never heard of the Friday series. Yeah, like it was like, a lot I, of like those. Friday after next coming to America. I know that by by I, I know Friday after next like word word for word coming to America. I'd never. I've never heard of it. I remember it. we watched it for the first time together. And I was like, are you, you've never seen this. It was like in 2014. <laughs> I, I can't wait. Part two is coming out soon. Oh, we should go to the movies and see it. Girl, I can't go to the movies with you. I can't go to the movies with Babe. you. I love you to life. I can't go to the movies with you. You know, you know, you and I, we don't do well at the movies together. I'm, we can't I'm watch feeling, a movie together. I'm feeling a little rejected by Heather, you. We, you, but you, you know why though? Because I don't understand the movie unless you're there giving me commentary. But I can't give you commentary if I'm watching the same okay. movie with you. Okay. It's my first time watching it. <laughs> but you know everything. No, I don't. I'm trying to learn it. <laughs> like, uh, like legit, we sit in a movie theater and we're watching the same movie at the exact same time. Heather says, what happened? <laughs> I mean, do you expect, like, if I stop right now, I'm going to miss something. Okay, okay, let's make a pack. For Coming to America 2, I wanted to dress up and go to the movies. No, I'm not I'm not dressing up. I'm wearing, okay. some, I'm wearing some sweats. Okay, so we're going to go, but okay. I make a pack that I'm not going to ask any questions until the movie's over. Oh, goodness. That means a car ride is going to be full of questions. Are you serious? Wait, hold on. But you got to watch part one first. Have you, did you watch part one we all the way? We watched it together. You did? Did yeah. you did you did you finish it? Yep. Did you understand it? Is a is a better question. You explained it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I think the best question is, did you understand what I explained? Yes. Okay. Okay. I just Oof. I tune out of movies sometimes. I'd yeah. be, be tired. I want to see Bad Boys Three. You just saw it. I know. I said I said I went to go see it. Oh, okay. I actually finished it this time, okay. so I'm really happy about it. All right, so I'm glad we finished that a lighter. We were talking about depression. We talked about depression, but this is a good lighter note because laughter is good for your soul. So I hope you listened and you laughed and you you learned, and you stop eating meat because (laughs) it is detrimental to your body. Vegan propaganda. Vegan propaganda. And I want to encourage you guys to watch Game Changers. My wife works for the government (laughs) on Netflix. What? I don't work for the government. Oh god. Oh my god. Vegan propaganda. Um, anyways, I'm trying to keep people alive, but it's so crazy that Dr. CB and anybody else that comes out and talks about this ends up getting killed. Now, Dr. CB, Dr. CB was the goat. And I mean, I, I, I still, I still use some of Dr. CB's products, but I mean, whatever. Anyways, um, I'm going to eat my hamburger and I'll be happy with my hamburger until I get to the point where I'm convicted enough not to eat my hamburger. And I'm going to win him over with my quiet and gentle spirit. It wasn't quiet just a few minutes ago. It wasn't gentle either. It was kind of forceful. It was kind of loud. 
It's Loud a, and forceful spirit. That's it's a I podcast. Heard. Oh, you want me just to be quiet and silent at the podcast? Oh, here we go. Is here that we what go. we doing here for we women? Go. To here women? We go. Here you we trying go. to push me back a hundred years? Feminist, fem- <laughs> feminist rising. Here we go. <laughs> Do we want this right now? We not even. You looking for this smoke? You don't want this smoke, baby. You don't want this smoke. I want all of this. You can have this. Oh. I can get that smoke too. You don't want that smoke, baby. <laughs> you don't want that smoke, baby. <laughs> Okay. Hilarious. All right, we got to end this. Hey, y'all, but uh, make sure you share with your family, your friends. I mean, I I hope this was encouraging to you no matter where you are. Depression is a um, a serious thing and don't hide it. Yeah. And if you need help, you know, reach out. There's a suicide hotline number. Uh, Make sure that you make sure you reach out. Don't ever be ashamed to admit that you're not okay. And always remember, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay. And if you know somebody who is suffering with depression, um, do your part. Check on that person. Just reach out. Sometimes it may not be a phone call. Sometimes it may not be a text message. Sometimes it's just you showing up to their house. I've had people to just show up to my house. Uh, you got to really know that person. Like, you don't just be showing up and the person <laughs> don't like you. So just show up and um, just be be that, be that light that that person may need at that time. I agree. And if you know of anybody that has a new baby um, that is just... They're really quiet. They're just, they say they're really stressed. I want to encourage you, instead of saying, hey, do you have postpartum depression? Go, <laughs> go over to their you house. postpartum depression. Because <laughs> guess what? Moms don't want to talk about it. And I couldn't really put it into words because I felt like ashamed. Like I shouldn't be sad. Many women want to be pregnant, right? So go over there, send a meal. Go over and say, hey, can I hold your baby so you can get in the shower? Hey, can I just come and love on you? So um, I want to encourage you just to reach out and, and just be discerning as the Lord leads you. And we, every time you guys post on social media, we see it. We love your feedback. Keep it coming. We appreciate you guys and we love you guys. Thank you for subscribing and make sure you guys continue to subscribe, subscribe and download. Love y'all. Bye.